Today's very detailed video, we are going to take what I and many others consider the last decent Dyson upright that Dyson did, the DC33, and I am going to show you how to strip it down to its component parts ready to be cleaned up because it works but oh it's filthy the suction's reduced it's just in need of a life reset so over the course of this video we shall smash it apart and i'll show you how to do it Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums and people looking to breathe new life into their Dyson DC33. This video shall just be a marathon of taking it apart, so pause if you need to, comment and I shall see it and respond, as will probably my other followers who are also Dyson experts. And yeah, let's get this knocked down, see if there's anything broken or missing and go from there. So what I do is I get a very large plastic box to hold all the pieces as well as somewhere a little pot for the screws and other fixings. You also need a Torx T15 screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver for poking and prying stuff, possibly the belt lifter tool and a small pair of pliers to remove the edge cleaning brushes from the base plate. We really need to start with those now because we need to just break this down a bit and then I can come a bit closer and show you how bits work. So first we should remove the cyclone and pop it to one side for now. Then we can remove the cable, remove the wand, and remove the hose which is a plastic tab at the back that you pull out and then the hose lifts off. In fact we can then take the hose off Well, I'm going to wash this hose he says being unable to get it off there we go this hose will wash up very nicely I put them through the washing machine with some towels to stop them from banging around so that can go over there out of the way now there isn't much else that I ever take off of a Dyson DC33 one because it's all fairly well put together that's very difficult to get on and off but the main thing that I do is just pop off the little button latch for the tools because underneath it you will sometimes find that little spring absolutely choked up with fluff and then that causes it to not grip the tools as well so that's it for the wand really that can all get washed whole next well we'll take the tools off and apart because they can be washed as they are they're in okay order certainly life left in them and now we can come a little bit closer because this is a lot smaller and we'll start up at the top with the cable now to get the cable off there are four screws at the back here four screws removed the switch housing just pulls off and away do not recommend trying to take this out because unlike the earlier Dyson's it is fairly well in place I've also never taken that out because again that's that will just snap off the perimeter plastic so that as a whole thing can go in there and then we can see the cable and these are very simple because obviously it doesn't have a brush rod motor it's just got the old style clutch so up here we just have the main switch really we need to take the what the terminals off there is a little push tab at the back of every spade connector on this machine actually that you must push first and then it slides easily off and there is your switch if your machine doesn't stay on it's likely that this switch is broken. However, it's cheap, that is how you repair 
your switch. But we want to go a step further than that. So we'll pull the cable off, open up the little plastic cage surrounding the neutral cable and pull that off. And that is our mains cable off. The mains cable seems in excellent order, so we don't need to replace that. If you do, used very good cable are very cheap on eBay indeed. So, we can pull the wires down and then push them through to the other side and then just leave it hanging down there like so. Next are these two seals, which just pull off, ready to be washed, and then because they just get dry and don't really seal to the cyclo very much. And that's it for this entire top end. We can now move down to the rest of the machine, where we just need to start removing ancillaries. Really, we'll start with the post motor filter which I shall replace because it is just end of life. These don't last forever. We'll be sticking a new one of those in, so that can go over into the rubbish pile. Then, if I can remember where I put my screwdriver, there is a screw here that we need to remove. Then using our flathead screwdriver, we need to prise out and separate this little plastic piece that holds the filter cover door on and both of those can go in the washing. We'll remove the blockage, the blockage elbow and if you squeeze on the sides that haven't got the tabs on it simply separates and pulls off. There is also a rubber seal here which needs to come off to be washed as well. Then one further rubber seal here on the chassis of the machine. We'll flip around to this side and remove the pre-motor filter, which is actually spotless on this machine. Obviously, it's been taken care of, so I'm probably still going to wash it, just so I can say that the filters are spotless. But this and this in the washing machine again on a normal wash will come out like new, or at least clean, depending on how trashed your filter is. Inside the housing, and I'll do this on the floor, we simply pop out the four tabs. And again, this isn't mission critical, but I like to do it. It's also very fiddly, there we go. And that will take the release valve out, the big spring out, and the black housing itself, which can go there. There is then one last rubber seal on here, which is what the filter itself seals to. And that bit is done. There is then an seal, although this one actually seems glued on. And on the 33, they started gluing on seals. So we're not going to remove that, as I would do with other Dysons, purely because it is going to be a pain. We can then take out the wand air path blockage check slash removal port and I always take off the clip because it just makes it a lot easier to wash and we are nearly done the next thing we need to do is to pop off the clutch knob and for this you need to sort of recline stand up the machine and eventually it will release the two tabs that hold it on either side and that's Ready for washing as well, and that needs to come off first because the clutch won't come out with it on. I suppose the next thing that I will do is we'll take the wheels off, um, pop off one of the glamour caps, then you put your screwdriver in the little gap of the circlip, and it will just twist and pop off. like so, and hopefully hold on to your screwdriver and not fly across the room. Then we can take one wheel off, the little washer that sits below it, and then push and withdraw the rest of the axle, taking the other washer, and then tap it on the floor just to knock that off. You can leave the other circlip on the end of the axle because it's fine. 
and that's it peeled off. And now we can go underneath where we shall attempt to remove the internal hose which pulls off and actually we want to fully remove it in a minute. Then I find my bigger screwdriver or a coin or similar and we shall remove the base plate from the machine which is quite dirty as they can get. Chisel some of that out before I wash it because I don't want to clag up my washing station. There we go. And once that's done, we can go a couple of steps further by grabbing and pulling on the two edge cleaning bristles. I say edge cleaning, they don't do too much really. If, if you're missing them, I really wouldn't bother putting them back. And then to ensure that we can clean and lubricate everything, we shall pop these little wheels at these little wheels out these can bind up they wear they're ever so cheap but these seem to be okay I don't think we'll need to bother but it means I can get all the dirt out that sits underneath the wheels you'll have to make a judgment call on how far you will be going with your own personal Dyson I recommend doing it the full way purely because then you won't have to touch it for a good few years afterwards. There is then, on the base plate, a rubber seal, which you sort of do want to remove because a lot of dirt sticks behind it. You need this to have a good seal because the machine relies on it. And yeah, that is that base plate empty. Next depends on how good I suppose the belt is you can normally take the brush roll off without too much trouble because the, the belts will be worn but when the belts go back on it's a different story indeed take this opportunity to clean your brush roll a little bit you want all the lint all of the threads off I'll do that off camera then grab each end cap and they move and eventually will twist off, revealing all the dirt and muck that will be sat behind them. This is how you wear the bearings out in your Dyson brush roll, although they are very easily and cheap to replace. As is the entire brush roll, really. Look at that. Look, we'll take all that rubbish out. And pop that in there. Next. The axle should just push out of the other side and then you might need a slightly better screwdriver or way to clamp it because you need to hold the axle and then you can twist the other end cap off and again the other end cap isn't too bad it's just got a lot of fine dust in it. Next take the axle again stick it just inside the bearing and then twist and the bearing will pop out this one will be fine with a re-grease do the same on the other side yeah that one's fine as well so if these are if these are seized you can pop that cover off and get to the actual balls inside and free it up or replace the bearing or just buy a brush roll for 10 pounds from ebay and have it done that way. There we go, that's got most of the rubbish off of that. The rest will come off in the wash. Back to the machine and with the brush roll off, we can, you might have to get your screwdriver and insert it just in there and then lever down and you'll pop out one side of the brush roll housing. Do the same with the other side. And if your hose came off, you will have this in your hand. These hoses are very critical, actually. These provide the spring for the self-adjustment. And as you can see, there's not a lot of springing going on in there. But again, a trip through the washing machine on a fairly hot wash will reset that to new. So we'll do that and I'll show you how it comes out afterwards. 
the last thing to take out is this cover, which I've no idea what it's actually for. But what I know it does is fill itself up with fluff over the years. And it's always good to get it out. If you go into all this effort to reset your Dyson and get another 10 years out of it, pays to do it properly. So that's the brush. Empty and our little vanity cover. Next, we can take out the clutch and we'll need our Torx screwdriver again. There is one screw buried down here. So you need a screwdriver of at least this length. Unfortunately, you know, a ratchet driver and bits isn't going to help you too much here. And then there's two more screws down here which once removed will allow the clutch cover to sort of wiggle out. It gets caught a little bit up the top, but will come out eventually. I then remove this little metal belt guard from there as well, and that will go in the wash. Then take the clutch to motor belt off of the motor, then grab both belts and pull out. And here is our clutch dated the 27th of March 2012, which should date the machine. They are genuine belts. No, they're not. They are pattern belts. So somebody has been here before, but we're going to change those. The white wheel is okay. These wheels wear. This one's wearing, but fresh belts will sort that. I shall do that off camera because I already have a clutch rebuild guide. So we don't need to go through that now. And while we're like this, we can pop off the two retaining washers, clips, whatever you want to call them, that sit either side of the head. Then, one last recline, put your fingers under the edges, pull, and this lifts off. Always check that the little wheel that sits there rotates because that's what rides up and down this groove and locks the machine. It then goes over a hump and the wheel can literally turn to nothing, which you don't really want. Right, now we can go even further down and start to take the motor out. It actually involves starting with this, the changeover valve mechanism. There is a button here which is what locks into place. The cleaner head pushes on this, which releases that, otherwise it would just break itself. And we actually need to take this out first, which you can do simply by getting your stout screwdriver, putting it in, and just pushing down, which will release the two tabs. You want to take the spring off, and that bit is gone. Then remove the rubber seal that the wand U-bend connects to. That's quite important, otherwise this next bit doesn't quite work. Then pull the changeover valve away from the chassis ever so slightly. Push up on the bottom and a little gap will open up. And either side of this black piece is two little plastic tabs that you want to release. And then the whole thing falls off. This just slides on and it rides up and down there like so. As you can see, it's starting to clag itself up. That won't be sealing properly. And it, well, it's not catastrophic, but you don't want that. Now it is time for the motor. And there are one, two, three, four, five screws that hold the housing on. They all need to come out. With the screws removed, and it's already fallen off, we can remove the motor assembly from the cleaner itself. What we've also done is unscrewed this part of the U-bend, so this can come off, and they say we can wash it really well, get all of that dirt out, which we don't want. So normally, this seal would be taken off, but it's glued on, so we're not doing that. 
And then finally, something that I always do is take the screwdriver, stick it on the back of the filter clip, and eventually, there we go, it will pop out. These snap fairly frequently. Unfortunately, you have to go to roughly this effort, obviously, without the wheels on, but the whole thing's got to be stripped down in order to remove the elbow and get at the back of that clip. And the chassis is done. That's all that needs to come off of there. Oh. On the motor housing, pull off the top cover that hides the actual motor itself. Then I always push this black grommet into there so that it doesn't catch up. When we do the next bit, which is release all the big clips that sit around here. Get two off, the rest follow. This has a little bit of dirt where it sucks it in over the years you will find that you will build up a nice little collection just in front of the motor so we want to get that out don't remove that seal because it's a pain to get in and then push down on the spindle which will pop the motor up a little bit and then we can withdraw the motor and its wire it might unplug itself as we can see, this machine has been used wet and water has got to the motor. The motor seems okay. We need to take these rubber seals off anyway to wash them. If you're fitting a new motor, you'll need to take the rubber seals off of the old one because the new ones don't come with them. And here we have a nice original YDK. It's actually in very good condition inside the armature which is that spinny bit there, which I can't quite get a good shot of. It's very clean. That's what burns them out. The carbons will be fine. I don't buy into replacing the carbons on these motors because the new motors are so cheap. There's just no point. When they go, they go. They spin too fast. Sort of like the older hoovers and such on my channel that would be fine. These destroy themselves. So that as a unit can stay as it is. The last thing that I remove simply to help cleaning is this little screw here that holds the diffuser for the exhaust air of the machine. And the main bit is done. All we have left is this. And to strip this apart, open up the bottom flap and remove the bin from the cyclone. Ugh, filthy. Then, with your small screwdriver, we need to release those two tabs there. So once one goes, the rest go with it. You can hug it under your arm, give it a good squeeze, and they just snap out. And then pull the bottom seal off from the flap. And this is a hole could go in. You can remove that, I've done it before, but there is no point. It's quite tricky. Now we're on to the actual business end. This is the cyclone unit of the DC-33. And the first thing we're going to do is start at the bottom. And you'll see the tabs running around the edge. Simply put your fingers under one and then push down on the cone and you will pop them out. And again, once two go... They all go, pick out all of the crud that sits in here. This one's quite clean, actually. And then take off the bottom seal. The main reason we did that first is so I can stand it up. Because I've now got to remove this top handle, which is always a bundle of laughs. In fact, the first thing that we will do is take our screwdriver, put it underneath the button and eventually wow that went far it will pop off like so let me go and retrieve that hang on then retrieve your bin release rod and its little spring from the other side of your room now we can get to the two screws that hold 
this top handle on. One and two. This machine's quite faded. I can tell being this close. Then this bit isn't too easy. You need to pull the back off there. Then the front is held in with these. Um, using trying, try not to snap them. Sort of lift, twist, poke, pry, however it works. Again, if your top handle has snapped, I would say it's probably going to be a little bit easier to just buy an entire cyclone. You can even change the colour of your machine at the same time. But because I like to have it off stuff clean underneath it, eventually it pulls off like so. Then we can get to the one screw that it hides. And then the vest. With that done, this top part will lift off and we can start to see how the cyclone is constructed. And hopefully that will just come up a heck of a lot clearer. With a wash, next thing to take off is this part of the bin release mechanism and its very annoying handed spring, which is very important to get back on the right way. Then we can remove all of these screws in here. those removed this part will pull out like so right this is the first replacement part that we actually need for this machine which is the cyclone gasket years of use literally wear the rubber foam away and again they're quite cheap I shall go and order one shortly so that is also fit for the rubbish this needs to be washed then we just need to split this and there is the top of the bin seal there and again more chunky clips to pop off that eventually this will come off. There is a spring sat at the back of the bin relief, relief release button. And you can see this one isn't too bad. That fills up normally. You see that's taken a big battering. And that's it. We have turned our Dyson DC33 into a box of plastic, a tub of fixings and non-washables, there's a clutch over there, and a motor. So, that's it for this video. We have this apart, I'm going to go and get all of this washed and start to dry it. And then in the next video, we shall put it all together. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video and or found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and you'll then see when part two comes up and then there'll be a part three where I do an after video of the machine and show how it came out. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and you will see me and this soon. Bye bye.